the maximum flow minimum cut theorem. So here we're going to look at treating our network like water flowing through pipes. And let's have a look at a, a simple network to start with. So we're going to label this S and this T and we're going to call this our source and T our sink. And you can think of the source as a tap. And we're going to label a weighting of 10 and we want to think about we want to think of this as 10 milliliters of water coming out from the source every second towards the sink so we've got along this pipe you can think of it we've got a flow of 10 milliliters a second and here we're going to look at making cuts in our network which is going to separate our source from our sink. So this would be an example of a cut that would separate our source and sink. So let's look at another network. So we have our source and our sink the flow of 20 and 10. Now with this network here, coming from our source, we've got through this pipe, we've got 20 milliliters every second, and then from here to here, we have 10 milliliters every second. But when we have flow, if sometimes there's pipes that limit our flow in a network, and here, this is going to be one of those pipes, because we're trying to have a flow of 20 leading into a pipe that only allows a flow of 10. And what that means is that there's no problem having 10 come through this pipe, but if we have a 21 leading into a 10, that means this pipe here will only allow a flow of 10. And this is an important concept we're going to need in order to work out what our maximum uh, flow is going to be through our network. And in this case, the maximum flow through this network would actually be 10, even though this pipe allows for a flow of 20, because this pipe here limits our flow. So let's have a look at a more complicated network. And we're going to see how we can work out the maximum flow through the entire network where we have our source and our sink at the beginning and end there and we're going to have a series of pipes as we're going to think about them each with different allowable flow rates so this one's going to be 10, 20, 10, 5, 20 5, 10, 5, 20, and 10. And what we want to try and do is we want to try and work out the maximum flow through this entire network. And in order to do that, we're going to have to work, first work out the limits that some of these pipes make on our network. And the best way to go about it is probably to start from um, our sink at the end and, and work backwards. So let's start with this pipe down here. It allows a flow of 10 and we look at pipes leading into that one and this pipe before it allows a flow of 10 so there's no problem with this pipe allowing a flow of 10. So we're going to write our theoretical maximum flow above it there so we can see. Now, this one here allows a flow of 20, but before it, this pipe only allows a flow of 5. So this pipe is only going to allow a flow of 5 as well because our inlet flow has to equal our outlet flow at least. So this one will only allow 5 to come through because the pipe before will only allow 5 to come in through 
before it. This one allows a flow of 5, and this one allows a flow of 20, so there's no problem why this one can't have a flow of 5. Okay. So if this one's going to allow a flow of 5, this one with a flow of 20 will only be able to push 5 into this one. So we can write a 5 up here. Again, this one is allowing 20, but we know we can only let 5 in through here, so we can make this one a 5. So we know we can allow 10 into here, because this one was 10, so there's no problem why. And we can look in before it as well. So it's allowing a flow of 10, and this one is a flow of 10, so there's no problem why this one can't be a 10. So this one here, pushing from our, pushing from our source, uh, is a 10 leading into a 10, so there's no problem why that one can't be a 10. Okay, so things get a little bit tricky up here. So this one allows a flow of 20 leading into a 5 and a 5. So theoretically this one would only be able to push... 10 in and separate the 5 and 5 into there. So we know this one's 10. Now, here we have two pipes leading into this one, and this one's only allowing a flow of 5, which means that from here and here we can only have a total of 5. So we don't know exactly where the 5 are going to come from because we have 2 leading into it, but we know their totals can only be 5. So we could make this one 5, and this one 0, or we could have made this one 5, and this one 0, or any other kind of combination there. Now, now that we've worked out the limits of all these pipes, we can go ahead and start making cuts to work out our maximum flow. And the maximum flow minimum cut theorem is that the maximum flow, the maximum flow will actually equal the minimum cut you can make in the system. And in order to so let's let's have a look at just any any cut. So let's make a cut through here. And always when we make a cut, we have to separate our source and our sink. And here we've done that. Our source and our sink are separated. And now we just add up the total, our total weightings on all those cuts, and we can work out what that cut produced. So here we've got it. So we're not adding up our saturated values. We're actually adding up our, our nominated um, maximum flows for all of them. So we're adding up 5, 20, and 10 to give us 35. So this cut was a 35. Now, let's have a look at another cut. Let's have a look at this one here. So again, we've separated our source and our sink, and we want to add up every edge that we've cut through, but only if they start on the source side. So this edge does start from the source side, this one does not start from the source side, it actually starts from the sink side, so we do not want to add up this one. This one does start from the source side, so we can add it up, and this one also starts from the source side. So here we only want to add up the 10, the 20, and this 20, and that's going to give us 50 as that cut there. But how do we know where the minimum cut is, or the maximum flow? So what we want to do is we actually want to look at all the, all the edges that are fully saturated and make a cut through there. So what we mean by that is edges that the theoretical maximum flow is, is the same as our nominated flow here. So both of these ones, five, this one is fully saturated. So is this one, so is this one, and so is this one. So we'd like to make a cut that went through all of those saturated lines there. So, for example, that would be one such cut. And we can look at that cut there. 
So this does start from the source side, so we can add that one. This one starts from the source side, and so does this one, so we can add those all together. 5, 5, and 10 to give us 20. And you can see, out of all those cuts, this one is the lowest value, and if you try every possible cut, you will actually not get a value lower than 20. So that's our minimum cut that we can make in the system, which is also equal to our maximum flow. So in this case, our maximum flow and minimum cut is equal to 20. And what we're saying is that if we can push, we, we know we can push, let's say, water through all of these, these pipes here. And they, these are the ones that are limiting our flow. But if we get all of that water across, that will be our maximum, maximum flow. Thank you.